Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Wednesday in the Word. We are starting week number two of our 10 week series, Falling in Love with God. Today's topic is God's heart. That's right, God's heart. So let's go on and get started. Now, when we talk about the heart, we have various images that pop into our mind. Many times it is the heart that physically beats within our very bodies. The heart that we understand from which we love and feel towards someone. Now, there's a difference between our heart, our spirit, and our soul many times when we are in conversation. So let's get some groundwork. Now, I will be talking about the heart. It refers to the part of man that connects and communicates with God. That heart. See, our spirit differs from our soul because our spirit is always communicating, always pointed towards, is connected to, and is that thing that bonds us together and exclusively with God. Now, our soul, on the other hand, can sometimes be a little self-centered and can be connected with our ego. So the joy that we feel, the comfort that we feel, the peace that we feel from being in God's presence, that is through spirit. And that is the connection from which I am making our human connection of heart. A pure heart connects with the subconscious mind when we talk about our mind, body, and spirit connection. Our heart, when we're talking about holistic health, is generally a fitness perspective. What can we do to make sure that our bodies are healthy? Today, again, we are talking about our heart from a spiritual perspective connection. See, even though it is, um, your spirit is intelligent and it is able to help you uh, determine your day and go about your day. It is that God presence in your spirit that helps make us the people that we are. Now, for those of you who follow me, when we talk about mindset, especially if you are following me with the Believe to Win or the Pivot to Purpose series that I have for you, then you know that when I talk about the heart, I am talking about the subconscious mind as well. It is the subconscious mind that helps us coordinate who we are and speaks to our soul and therefore makes us do the action that we do in our day-to-day lives. Our subconscious mind is over 5,000 times stronger than our conscious mind. The things that we think about, the things that we pour into each other. As a parent, you have a responsibility to teach your children. You pour into them. Those ideals, those theories, those ways of being, you pour that into them and that subconscious mind soaks it up like a sponge. Well, we are the children of God and our goal should be to soak it all up the way that God is. To have the spirit of God within us at all times. We know that we have the breath of God within us. Then our heart should behave the same way that God's heart behaves. Our goal should be that in everything we do, we are seeing each other through the eyes of Christ. 
scripture reminds us that we have the mind of Christ, then surely we should be able to view each other the way God views each other. So we're going to look at just two scriptures today that reminds us of God's heart and how we should understand who we are and how we can be as well. Let's look at Proverbs 4.23. That's Proverbs 4.23. And today I will be reading from the NIV, the New International Version. And it says, Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Guard, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Now, I find it quite curious that in all of the years, uh, no one has ever really set me down and said, I'm talking about people, not, you know, seminary or anything like that. No one has ever really sat me down with this scripture and says, did you realize here that we're not talking about the heart that beats within your chest, but we are talking about your subconscious mind. We are talking about your spirit, your, your spiritual being, your spirit man in this scripture. No, Not one person ever told me that. So as a child, I thought that we were supposed to guard our chest, if you will, because we were trying to guard our heart, our heart beat, you know, that muscle beating in our chest for everything I do flows from it. So everything is connected to the, to my chest, to the heart that is within my chest. I was confused dare I say baffled. I didn't quite understand the connection there. It wasn't until I was an adult and someone explained to me how all of these words can be, um, that they need to be explained on a different level. Though we are talking about human beings, because we are spirit beings, having a physical experience, the words that are used are sometimes used to help us understand from a symbolic way what's going on in the world. So when we look at this above all else, guard your subconscious mind for everything you do flows from it. Have you ever realized that many times when you do something and someone uh, asks you, why did you, why did you do that? You go, I don't know. I guess I just did it. It's because your subconscious mind already has an answer to that issue, that concern, that problem. It is, it is something that our subconscious mind is the one that guides us through all that we do. Our conscious mind understands what our subconscious mind is telling us to do and therefore we do it. So our subconscious mind absorbs everything. When you're a child, you don't question your parents. You believe everything that they tell you. You don't question what you see on television. You believe everything that it tells you. But as your conscious mind starts to develop, And that's where you start to question, is this right? Is this correct? Is this true? Is this pure? Right? That's when you start to wonder if the things that have been held to be true in your subconscious mind are in fact the ways in which you choose to carry out your life. That's why we can say that when children, when babies are brought into this world, that they are kind that there are no racist babies, there are no lying babies, right? That they are kind and gentle and warm and loving and all of those beautiful attributes, right? But it is by their growing, by their maturing, that they absorb the information that is around them, that they absorb the things that the parents, the caretakers, the adults in their lives have poured into them and they turn into a particular version, not only of themselves, but of the adults that are around them. 
Now, you guys have heard me say, you teach that which you know. So if you don't know anything about business, you tend not to teach very much about business. If you are a... um a, an entrepreneur, if you're a solopreneur like, like I am, you tend to teach that to other people. If you are a graduate of the University of Hard Knocks, you have a tendency to teach those life lessons to others so that they don't have to go through what you have gone through. We teach that which we know. God is trying to teach us in these moments as well. Above all else, guard your subconscious mind for everything you do flows from it. When you guard your subconscious mind and you understand that God talks to us in that space, that when we pray to the Lord Almighty for an answer, he speaks to us and we have a knowing and understanding that we have the answer in that moment because God speaks to our heart. God speaks to our subconscious mind. Let's go on to the next scripture. We're looking at Psalm 37, 4. Psalm 37, 4. NIV. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now again, here we go with that word heart. Do we really uh, understand this to mean that God is going to give us the desires of the beating muscle within our chest? That our heart, you know, that thing that thump a thump thumps inside of our chest, that that has desires, that has wishes, hopes, dreams, and goals, that that is what he's talking about. But when we understand it to mean that we should take delight in the Lord, for he will give us the desires of the thing that our subconscious mind has been working on. That thing that our subconscious mind has tried to be uh, to guide us to that thing that spirit has been trying to guide us through that thing that Holy Spirit has been working on our spirit. That thing, that is the heart that we understand that God is going to give us that desire. It is in our spirit, man. It is in our spirit that Holy Spirit works on us. When we're doing something and we know we shouldn't be doing it and Holy Spirit convicts you and it's like, ooh, you just know in your spirit that that's not right. So you know in your subconscious mind that this is not right because as you are flipping through the pages of your subconscious mind and you find the direction the instruction the challenges that you have gone through and you understand what should or should not happen your conscious mind says aha I have the answer and it's right here this is what we are going to do So the answer is within you. It is always within you. Be it that Holy Spirit has poured into you or people have poured into you or a combination of both. The answer is within you because God is within you. So take delight, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God will give you the desires of your heart. The more time you spend with him in prayer and meditation, the more Holy Spirit will continue to pour into you. The more that God will pour into you and give you the answers. He will give you the desires of your heart. Knowing that God is spending that much time with us, knowing that God is listening to us, knowing that God cares enough to not only spend time with us, but to give a piece of himself to each and every one of us. Yes, we serve a mighty, awesome and amazing God. And to know that God is right there should be such a comforting thought. See, Jesus in the physical had to leave so that Holy Spirit could come, remember? 
Oh, he is the great comforter. Holy Spirit is the one that speaks to our spirit. And in that knowing and understanding, we have the peace of God, the peace that surpasses all human understanding. What a joy to know that God is still with us. That even if we have forgotten to talk to God, God has not forgotten to talk to us. To make himself available for the conversation that he wants to have with you and the one you should have with him. See, falling in love with God is so easy to do when you understand who God really is. When you understand what God is offering to you, you see how it's easy, how it's easy to continue to be a Christian in today's world. When you understand that it is not people's perception, it is not people's projection of what God is, but that it is God telling you who he is at all times. He is telling you that I am who I am. And that we have access to that all day, every day. So today, I hope that this helps you understand that we have a loving God who wants to spend time with you today. And I hope that you can spend some time today falling in love with God. <music>